me. I know you love me. Always thinking of me. I know you love 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 me. Always thinking of me. I know you love me. I know you love me. I know you love me. Always thinking of me. I know you love me. I know you love me. I know you love me. Always.
that we don't waver, but we stand in your word. We walk in your word. We thank you. We honor you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you, Lord. We thank you for being with us. We thank you, Father, for keeping us. We thank you for comforting us, for strengthening us. We thank you, Lord. So we honor you. We bless you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless you. And we honor you today. 
with our spirit, with our life, with our strength, we honor you. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Glory to your name. We're not embarrassed. We're not ashamed to call on your name. Doesn't matter us who's looking, who's listening. We will always worship you. We will always honor you. Hallelujah. We'll always bear witness to your name. Yeshua, your name alone is worthy of praise. Jesus, your name alone, Father. Hallelujah. Your name alone is worthy of praise. We worship that name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Can you just clap your hands and take your seat? Or we, or we will never stop. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is awesome, isn't he? Yes, 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 Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. God is so worthy. He is so awesome. Hallelujah. You know, we, we think about, we think about, uh, how the world, the world situation today, and just what happens that today is Sunday and Christmas fell on a Sunday. That's not supposed to happen, but the calendar didn't care and did it anyway. Amen. Amen. You know why that's not supposed to happen, right? No. <laughs> Who can tell you why it's not supposed to happen? Because, you know, Christmas, everything is closed, including churches. Right. Uh, yeah, okay. Right. So, so I don't know why the people who made the calendar didn't realize that. Because today is Christmas and some churches are closed. Y'all know that, right? Some of them shut down. They shut down for what? Whose birthday is supposed to be anyway? Christ. Who's? Christ. Who's birthday is it? My dad and name Donnie. And Jesus. And your dad. Okay. So now, 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 now really. If it's supposed to be Jesus' birthday, wouldn't this be the perfect time to come and honor him? Wouldn't this be the perfect time to come worship him? But we're allowing trees and gifts to go before our worship. So I'm not in church. Why? Because my trees and my gift deem that I do not it. My, my trees and gifts, they don't go. Don't go worship the one who you claim is their birthday. Come on now. Come on. What? What is that, coach? <laughs> Come on now. What? I mean, listen. We do a whole bunch of talking. As saints of God. And you think you're going to resist the mark of the beast. How are you going to resist the mark of the beast? You can't even overcome Christmas. You can't overcome Easter. You worry about the Easter rabbit and worry about the, the bunny and all that. You think you're going to resist the mark of the beast? You're not. You're going to be the first one taking it. You're going to be the first one taking it. If your birthday is more important than worship, you're going to be the first one taking it. I'm just saying, people of God, we put so many things before worship. Our birthday is my wedding anniversary, so we're going to be, you know, we're going to we're going to be in town, but we're going to be no, no, we're going to be in town, and at the church we're going to celebrate. That's it. That's it. I'm talking, and I mean what I say. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Do y'all feel me? We shouldn't put nothing before this. Nothing comes before us. Nothing. Nothing comes before us. I mean, Taisha, I appreciate the way you worship. She come to church. Right. Twice I've been here. You know who was here before me? Praying. Been here praying. Amen. With the music turned up. Another time I was here, you know who came in with a big boom box or whatever you had? Coming to pray. Amen. I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. Amen. We, need to, we need to start walking what we're talking about. Yes, that's it. We talk a real big game. But then when push comes to shove, we allow our family members and everything else, our holidays and everything else come before Christ. When push comes to shove, we allow all these other things to be first. Yeah. Hear me? Mm -hmm. This is why I don't have a game. This is why I'm not a part of the game. I'm not a part of the clique. I'm not a part of the in crowd because the in crowd is secondary to me. Yeah. I'm not a part of the big fan club. The reason why? Because none of you ever would come before my God or my worship. None of you. Yeah. No matter who you are. So I'm not popular in that area. I'm not popular in that area. No, 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 no. We're all going out to the beach. We're all going to, everybody's there. Y'all go do your thing. Amen. Go do your thing. I'm going to worship. Amen. And people think, oh, you think you're better. No, you think that. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I think I'm special. Yeah. I'm a peculiar person. Amen. A peculiar. So, so, 
Saints of God, we got to have a mindset. That's why in the Old Testament, if you notice the way God protected the children of Israel, they put him first. Yes, he protected them. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Oh, man, that's perfect. That's perfect. Daniel chapter, I don't know, three. Somewhere in the book of Daniel, there was a fire. Somewhere in the book of Daniel, there was a fire. And there was three boys they were to put in the fire. And these were teenagers. They were teenagers. What was their names? Uh-huh. What was their names? What was their names? I can tell you what their slave names were. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That was their slave name. What the name their father called them? Their father called them Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael. That's what their father named them. Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael. Hananiah meaning God has graced me. God has given me much grace. Azariah meaning God has helped me. God is my help. Mishael meaning who can compare to our God. No one is greater. And that's what happened in the fire, right? God graced them. God helped them. And he proved that nobody could compare to him. Their names match their victory. Are y'all here? Their names match their victory. But, but the slaves called them Shadrach, Meshach, and that's what we call them. We call them what the slaves called them because we hadn't studied. I'm just saying I know you I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We got to know what the word says. What's that? Watch what happened. I don't know. Watch what happened. I don't know if we got time. Daniel chapter 3, is that right? Yes. Yeah. It is? And what, what verses? Uh, well, it, start, it mentions the name first at verse 16. But this is when. Um, Read to where it says they went and told us, hey, when you hit the golf mm -hmm. and the music plays, there's some cats over there not worshiping. Right. Yes. Right. right? Right? There's some guys over there because the decree the was, and guess what? Look, look at what that said. Look at what happened. The decree was when, when the horn blows and the music starts, everybody fall down and worship this golden cow that represents uh, ne Nebuchadnezzar. Everybody fall down and worship his God. Right. Look at that. The sound, when the sound happens. Same thing is coming in the future with the Mark of the Beast. If you don't look, y'all don't understand. I hope you live long enough to see it. There's a time coming when God begins to prophesy. Prophecy is on point when it's of God. Yes. When God begins to prophesy and you hear the word of the Lord, you, you might live long enough to see it. I prophesied in 1984. Remember I just said? 1984. I spoke a prophecy and we was holding hand prints and I didn't even know what it meant. I said, God said there's coming a time when you're going to be able to turn your radio on and you're going to be able to hear the gospel on the radio from New York to Los Angeles without changing the channel. And when I said it, I was like, what just came out of your mouth? It scared me. But, but guess what? It hadn't been created yet. Satellite radio wasn't even in existence yet. And God spoke it in my spirit back in 1984. And in 1992, no, it was 94, 95, the thing came out called XM Radio. Series XM. And it was a satellite radio. And I was reminded of when God spoke to me back in the 80s. I said, oh, Lord, I should be a billionaire right now. Amen. But God spoke that. Read. Daniel chapter 3, verse 15. Now, if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, uh -huh. flute, harp, right. sackbut, salt, the orchestra is going to play. Yes. And dulcimer, uh -huh. and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. The image what? Which, Which I, I have made. Him. Now you know the mark of the beast is also the image of the beast. Yeah. Now, you hear this tune and you fall in worship. Why do you think everybody now has cell phones? Who, whoever dreamed of that? Back to the Future, they missed, they missed that part. You watch Back to the Future, probably one. You don't see no cell phones, they missed that part. But, but who would imagine that? That's why I always thought the scripture said in Revelation chapter 11, said there are going to be three witnesses and they're going to be killed in the middle of the street. Did it say that? In yeah. Revelation chapter 11, two witnesses, I think it is. Two witnesses. Yeah. Two witnesses. And they're going to be killed in the middle of the street. And they're going to be dead for how long? Three days. Three days and three nights they're going to be dead. What's going to happen on the fourth day? What's going to happen? They're going to rise up and the Bible says every eye will see them. All the nations of the world will see them. Now we read this back in 1979, 1980. I'm like, how in the world is everybody going to see them? Because the prophets of the Bible, they had already seen cell phones. They had already seen the internet. They had already seen their planes and jets. We just didn't understand it because we weren't in the spirit. So when the Bible says all the nation will see it, now I can understand how. Now I can understand how because everybody got phones, everybody got internet, everybody got Zoom and, and what's the other one called? Take remember they all these video programs? Right? Yeah. The Bible.
Bible knew it before we did. How could that be possible? How could a writing two, three, four, five, six thousand years old talk about things happening today and then we say it was just man who wrote it? It was man inspired by God who wrote it. Because ain't no man know that. Don't no man have that type of insight. That got to come from the realm of the spirit. Man, help me today. That ain't no man talking. Man wrote the Bible. That's why I don't like it. Yo, so give me all your degrees and your diplomas because men wrote those books that got you to graduate. I'll trust them books. Throw your diploma away. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, how about that? Yes. Since we don't trust the Bible because man wrote it. Guess who wrote the thesis of the man who was operating on you? The doctor. He wrote that. Come on now. Come on. And what is he? A man. And what are you going to do? Cut on you. Amen. And you said the lie. But you don't believe in these books. Yes. <laughs> that's only pertains to the Bible. No, no, no. Every other book gets a pass. But the Bible don't get a pass. Don't get a pass. What is that? Why? Why is there such an adamant torture fight against the scripture, against the word of God, or against the name of Jesus? Even how can we say Yahshua, you still condemn? You say Jesus, you still condemn. It don't matter. Why is this, this fight against it? You notice the whole creation, now listen to this, the Bible says, I know, but anyway, the Bible says the whole creation groaning and travailing, right, for the manifestation of the sons of God. The whole creation is groaning for us to manifest. Guess what? Guess what else the creation is doing? The whole creation is fighting against us manifesting. Yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. You got, wherever you got good, you got evil. Yes, you You got evil. That's why Adam and Eve had to fall. It wasn't no accident. God didn't say, oops, I tripped and they fell. It was planned before time began. It was already planned, but there is no proof of love. But you ain't never been through nothing. You don't know how much I love you until we have a bad situation, until we have a bad experience. Now you're going to know if I love you or not. Now you're going to know. I was in love with you until you called me a name, and now I'm done. I'm speak to you. No. You wasn't in love. That's not love. Love never fails. Thank you. Love love never ends. Love don't, don't return evil for evil. That's what love does. All us lying folks about we love somebody. I love you, but you didn't give me that 20 back. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We got to be wise and choose our words, people. Because we talk ourselves into proving that we're wrong. Man, read. You got me in trouble. Can read. All right. Let me, let me finish with it. Verse 15. But if ye worship not, uh -huh. ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery Ooh, Come on. Oh, no, hold on. Hold on. If you don't worship, you'll be cast into the midst of a burning, Fire. fiery furnace. furnace. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> now, this decree. Hold on. This decree wasn't just to the grown people. This decree was to all people. Yes, it was. So I'm responsible for making my kids pop. Do y'all hear what I just said? Yes. Remember we talked in Old Testament. Yes. Old Testament, the Lord didn't mess around. No, he he talking Al Capone and had nothing on God in the Old Testament. No, no, no. Nothing. He didn't play. No, so if your children didn't bow, and guess who's going to the fire? Them and, and you. Y'all yeah. going to the fire. Because they didn't play that back then. And so now we're talking about I'm going to resist the work of the beast. You, you can't. How are you going to resist the work of the beast? You can't come to church because oh, I feel a little something right there. I don't know what that is. I feel a little something right there. Stay at home. But you gonna but you gonna resist the market piece. Who do you think you who do? Who do you think? You're fooling. <laughs> come on. Come on. Remember that coach? Well, I was yeah. just a little boy. Yeah. <laughs> who do you think you're fooling? Yeah. You you can you can't come to church because oh, I got a twitch right there. I don't know what that is. I'm stay at home. Come on now. Come but you're going to resist the mark of the beast. Come on now. Man, when that mark comes out, you're going to be first in line. I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. Right hand and oh head. Right hand and oh head. Because the Bible said if they didn't do it back then, it was thrown to the fire. Mm -hmm. What? You got kids today that are 12 years old to tell their mama, shut up. Shut up. Come on now. Yes, you do. Yeah. And I see them at the grocery store whooping their mom and daddy's tail. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Beating them down. Snatching from him, running. Boy, I tell you what. That's on 
in bed. Oh, uh, Lord. I had eight of them. And they sat right in the front pew of the church. Sat there, wouldn't move. I saw a picture once when I was back visiting. And all of them sitting down the front like robots. You know why? Because they didn't have a choice. Because they weren't running me. I was running them. The insurance man came to my house. And, and, uh, and I was only about three, four years old, but I remember this. I'm sitting on the couch. We all sitting there, 15 of us, sitting there on the couch. The insurance man came over. At that time, you had to see all the kids. This is life insurance. You had to see all the kids and, and all the kids, make sure everybody healthy. And he told my dad, he gave me a walk up. He said, I ain't never saw no children that, that respectful. Never in my life. It's scary. He said, I never saw it before. First time I ever saw that. Never saw kids like that. And I was thinking to myself, yeah, if you only knew <laughs> the trouble out there. Because Bishop Weston didn't play it. Nowadays, kids do what they want to do. So imagine the sound coming up, the music playing, the blast going, and you tell Johnny, sit down and worship with Johnny, said, forget you. You and Johnny both going to the fire. That's right. Because they didn't play that back then. Now we let kids do whatever they want to do and get away with it, and they're going to take you to your grave. Yeah, come on, come on. The Bible said a child left alone brings his parents to shame. Now, man, why are you doing this to me? Really? All right. <laughs> and so after the warning, the question was asked, and who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? Oh, wait, no. Wait, what was the question? Who is that God that shall deliver you out? You know, the devil get bold sometimes, don't you? Yeah. Who's going to help you now? Right. Where is your God at now? They, the devil gets bold like that, don't you? So what you going to do now? Nah, look at you in the mess you in, talking all that God stuff. Where is he at? Y'all know we all been there before, and you feel like you feel like all eyes are on you. You feel like everybody looking at you and you're failing. Say, Lord, I've been worshiping you, I've been praising you, now I'm looking like a dummy out here. Yes, come on. But he said, got me looking like a like a goofy in front of everybody. That, that, he said, now who's gonna deliver you now? What you gonna do now? You got this invisible God that can't nobody see. You got a name that's unpronounceable, and now what are you gonna do now? You're gonna be thrown into the fire. What? What Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael, watch what they did. Read. All right. We know the story. We're going to read it anyway. Okay, so I'm going to read the, I'm going to read the Bible version. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar. Oh, ne listen to this. O Nebuchadnezzar. We are not careful to answer thee in this matter. We ain't even going to give We're not going to even, with, with the term they call it, we're not going to even dignify this. Read. If it be so, uh -huh. our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning Holy. fiery. They say he's able, but I think they said something else. Keep reading. And he will deliver us out of thine hand. Uh huh. King. What else? But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, uh -huh. nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Uh huh. Then was Nebuchadnezzar. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, they said a couple things right there. Oh, yeah. They stand before a king. The king says, what y'all gonna do now? So man, we don't even dignify that. We don't even dignify that. But we do know this. Our God is able. Did he say that? Yeah. Our God is able to deliver us. Yeah. Yeah. And he throws us in the fire. Guess what he said? Even if he don't, we ain't out with you. Yeah. If God don't deliver us, we know that he's still able. Yeah. How many times have you ever said that in your life? Yeah. If the Lord don't deliver me, I still know he's able. Yeah. Even if I die from my sin, I'm 
doing him. Amen. So now they, they, they could have said, Lord, what are we going to do? They didn't, they didn't freak out. They didn't get scared. They didn't panic. They didn't. They didn't poison the process. They let the process go because the Bible says before they even knew it and before it was even written in their spirit, you know what they heard? And all things give thanks. Amen. They was a new covenant in their spirit, you know what they heard? All things work together for good to them that love God. They heard it in their spirit. Come on, come on. They heard it already and they hadn't even got there yet. Yes, but all things give thanks. Yes, How many things? Oh. It didn't say all good things. It just said all things give yes. thanks. Yes. That means lift your hands up no matter what's going on. That means lift your hands and praise God no matter what the season is, no matter what the reason is. Do it anyway. We have yeah. right. yeah. We're almost there. Okay, now let me text this apostle. Uh huh. Uh oh. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, uh -huh. and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach. Wait, the form of his visage changed? Yes. Uh, could you imagine being that angry? Yes, that massive demon. Woo! Could you imagine? You ever seen that before? Let me tell you something. I was living in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, pastor the church there. Me and Knuckle here, we was doing good. <laughs> That's nice, but my bad, it slipped out. Man, we was doing burning Milwaukee alive. We were, we were in Milwaukee Park. And there was a preacher there. Lord, I can't call his name because he's still a good man of God. He's still a prophet of God. You know what I mean? His calling ain't got nothing to do with me. I don't care what he did, how he did it, I didn't call him. I got that out the way. But this man of God, he was molesting children. He's molesting children. And so I heard the rumors that he's blessed the children, but I, I didn't have no proof to believe it. So I'm thinking, well, I don't, you know, I can't accuse the man of nothing. So we went by his church to visit, and we had a good time. He told me, he said, Apostle, let's go out for lunch. I said, oh, yeah, cool, let's go. Went to lunch. We're sitting there, and we're talking. Good to talk to scriptures. And saints of God, I've never saw him before in my life. His face turned into the face of a wolf. And for about two seconds, I was looking straight in the mouth of a wolf. Never saw that before in my life. Man, it, it kind of scared me. I, I said, whoa. So the Lord was saying to me, no matter what's coming out of his mouth, he is a wolf in sheep clothing. I didn't need to hear the rumors. I look here. I know what she said about it, but now I know for myself. Rumors didn't matter no more. And when we left, now check this out. Coach never told nobody. Never mentioned that to a single soul. Kept it to myself. Right. About four years went by. And there's a guy now, uh, can't think his, you can remember his name, but he started a church with Margaret. Margaret started a church in Milwaukee later on. And Margaret told me, Margaret was his apostle. He said, I used to be a homosexual. He said, God delivered me. Yeah, you're going to be getting delivered from it. Get what the world says. He said, but God delivered me. And he says, and now I'm living to start a church on and on and on. I was like, man, praise God. Can't hold that against nobody, right? I said, praise God, brother. If God delivered right. you, I'm standing with you. Right. About four years passed. Then he says to me, a few weeks later, he said, I went out to dinner with Pastor so-and-so. I said, really? He said, yeah, man, we had a good time. I said, good. He said, but he invited himself to my house that evening. Oh, and he said, he came to my house. I let him in. And he said, I had to fight for my life. I said, what do you mean? He said he knew where I was delivered from. Oh, and, but he ain't delivered from it. Mm. He said he was trying to rape me, Apostle. And wow. then he said this. He said, and while he was trying to rape me, I looked in his face, and his face turned to the face of a wolf. Oh. Come on, man. I almost jumped out of my. I was like, oh, wait, I saw that. And I never told nobody. But the man, he went to prison for what he did. He went to prison. But my point is, just because. People are saying hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. It don't mean that spirit is saying hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. It's just you talk out of your mouth. What your hand proud says? You talk loud? Yeah. Ain't saying yeah. nothing. Yeah. But your proud says something worse. I can't repeat that. <laughs> so money talks. If something else walks. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Read, man. Right. We're going to get you in trouble again. Therefore, he spake. Uh -huh. His facade changed. He was so mad at him that his whole face changed. Yes. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace uh, one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. Hold on. Now, 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 did y'all get this? Yeah. He said, turn the furnace up seven times and tie yeah. We ain't going to throw them in on 350 bake. No, they ain't going to be baking like a table like cookies. They're going to be on broil. Yeah. Broil is when you turn it all the way up, right? So he said, turn it up seven times harder than we usually turn it up. Now get this, he said, when he turned it up, they, they didn't turn it up tomorrow when the sound went. They turned it up right then, so if by the time tomorrow comes, if they don't buy, it's going to be nice and hot. Right. It ain't going to be warming 
up. Turn up now. So they got 24 hours and the fire gonna be just just going. And it's gonna be nice and hot Amen. when they don't buy. Read. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army. Oh, get the strong guy. We want Hercules. We want Samson. We want all the big strong guy that just in case they try to fight. He said, I'm going to throw him in the fire. I'm going to make sure they go in. Because I'm getting all these guys right here. And they're going to grab him and throw him in. Man, he was hot. Yeah, he was steaming. Yes, he was. Free. So he commanded his mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh -huh. And to cast them into the bar. Uh, I guess he did it right there. He grabbed them. Oh, so he didn't wait for the next day. They get it. He didn't wait for the next day. He just said, grab them. Oh, y'all going to talk to me like that. They're going to bash me from my whole nation. I'm king. Do you think it? Bite them. Mm -hmm. Right now. Yeah. What happened? Then these men were bound in their coats, uh -huh. their hosen, and uh -huh. their hats. They didn't take off their look. Nope. They, they kept their hat tied on. <laughs> they didn't take nothing off. Tied all up just the way they are. Real. And their other garments. Uh -huh. And were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Read. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, what the happened? flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Did you hear that? Yeah. That's, oh, God. That's, that's the guys amazing. that were commanded to throw them in, what happened to them? Yeah. They, got they got burnt up. Yeah. They got burnt up. Hold on. Now they were bowing down worshiping the golden calf. Yeah. They was worshiping the golden image. They was being obedient to the king, but when they threw the prophets into the fire, what happened? They got Fire, and the fire was burning, but the glory was shining through. 
through the fire. Yes, yes. Come on, people of God. Nebuchadnezzar was a great king. Yes. Two times he repented. That I know of. Give me more than two. But two times he said, man, I was wrong. And that's the thing I like about Nebuchadnezzar. He admitted when he was wrong. Yes. Keep reading. All right. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace uh -huh. and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh -huh. ye servants of the Most High God, oh come God. forth and come hither. Then wait, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. wait. What did he say? Wait, wait, wait. You servants of what happened to yesterday, Nebuchadnezzar, when your golden calf was the son of God. When your golden calf was the Most High, tallest God. Now that they didn't get burned up, he said, oh, I better jump on this ship fast. <laughs> Job. 
Do we really believe the Bible for real? It's not like Pastor Michelle said we, we read like Bible stories. It's not just the Bible story. It's real life. The Bible is real. Yes, it, is. it don't matter what you've done, what you've been through, yeah. or how much hell you've been through, or how many mistakes you've made. Who in here never made a mistake? They never made a mistake. Who in here never made a mistake? Oh, oh. Put your hand out. <laughs> well, all of us don't mess up. Oh, yeah. Come on. All of us don't mess up. At one point, I know that we all have made. Come on. Yes, yes. Even while well, I've been preaching over 40 years, you think, hey, well, since I've been preaching, I have perfected it. No. Right. No. no. Come on. Being a preacher don't mean you don't mess up. It means that when you mess up, you don't do the same thing twice. The devil ain't going to catch me twice in the same place. Come on, come on. He ain't going to catch me twice in the same place. Oh, yeah, did you do that? I did that. You ever do it again? No. Nope. He ain't going to catch me twice in the same place. So if you mess up, just get up and don't do the same thing again. Are y'all here? Get up, repent, keep going. That's the key. The key is, did you say you were sorry? Did you repent? Was there movement? Yes. Is that no matter? How about right, Ken? Did you love it? So I was just having the exact conversation you have now with my parents last night about what was going on around us. Hallelujah. See, that's confirmation. That's confirmation from God. So then, so if you messed up, just get up and keep going. And people are going to talk about you. You know why? Because people don't never forgive. Did y'all hear what I just said? People don't never forgive. They hold it forever. Why? Why? Do you know when you're holding things in your heart, when you're holding things in your heart, you're holding that person in your heart? Yeah. You got that person in your heart and they have authority in your life? Yeah. They still have authority in your life. When people are in prison, you got to feed them, you got to pay the cable bill, you got to give them some kind of exercise. When you got somebody in your heart, you got to feed them, you got to pay the cable bill. Dude, this person is ruling you. Let them go set them free. Forgive. After what they did to you, can you forgive? Hallelujah. Has God ever forgiven us? Man, what, what would I be? What would we be without his forgiveness? Imagine that if God was unforgiving. I tell you who would be here right now? Moi. We say it in English, me. If God was unforgiving, I'd be in the grave right now. Because since I've been saved, I've fussed God. I've done enough fussed God. I've been mad at God. I had attitudes with God. I even quit speaking to him. I said, you know what? I'm, I'm done with him. <laughs> I'm done with you. And he still forgave me. Amen. And he still forgave me. What kind of love is that? No matter what you've done, he still forgives me. I, I, I committed the most horrible things since I've been saved. And guess what he did? Forgave me. Give me another opportunity. How in the world can you resist a God like that? Give me another opportunity. Job, what happened to Job when we're almost done? Uh, you want where Satan was complaining well, about? No, no, no. I want to part where the messengers were. Oh, coming. the messengers, okay. Alright. Now watch this. Job and Job, where you at? Uh, Job chapter 1, starting with verse 14. Job 1, 14, what is it? Back up. And there was a day. Uh -huh. I'm 13. And there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine uh -huh. in the eldest brother's house. Now you know Job is the oldest book in the Bible. It's older than the book of Genesis. Y'all know that? It's the oldest book in the Bible. The land of Ur, it, it predates the book of Genesis. Just throw it out there. So how could that be? Well, Moses wasn't in the beginning. God took Moses to the beginning to write how the beginning began. He wasn't there. God took him. Amen. Let's straighten that out. Okay, read. read. All right. Uh, verse 14. And there came a messenger unto Job uh -huh. and said, The oxen were plowing. And the asses feeding beside them. Uh -huh. And the Sabians fell upon them. Oh, oh, oh I gotta say this. He said the oxen was plowing and what else? And the asses The were asses were what? Going, what were they going? Feeding beside them. Feeding beside them. them. The donkeys, they should get somebody to get offended. Keep reading. And, and the, the Sabians, Sabians fell upon, upon them. them. Who can tell you who the Sabians are? Do y'all know who the Sabians are? It's, it's so funny, I probably shouldn't be laughing about it. Who are the Sabians? The Sabians were the black folks. They were, dark, they were really dark skinned. They would look like 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 Kenyans. They were really dark skinned. Okay. So the Saviors came, them, them Negroes, they came and fell upon us. <laughs> wow. The Saviors were dark skinned people. What did they do to them? All right. And the Saviors fell upon them and took them away. Uh -huh. Yea, they have slain the servants with the, with the enemy. They killed everybody. They, they took the oxen and the donkeys away and they killed everybody with and I am only escaped alone. I escaped alone to tell you. Keep going. 
while he was yet while he was still talking somebody said he wasn't done done. while he was still talking he had more bad news to give but he couldn't even get all of his bad news because another guy came in and knocked him out the way and said John what happened there came also another and said the fire of God has fallen from heaven Uh and has burned up the sheep lightning has struck and it burned up what? The sheep so and your oxen are gone, your donkeys are gone, now life is struck, and now your sheep are going what else? And the servants and consumed them. <laughs> and I only I alone have escaped alone to tell them. Read. And while he Oh, he wasn't even done. Another guy came push him out the way. He said, Joe, read. <laughs> there came also another and said, uh-huh. The Chaldeans made The Chaldeans. Yeah. Come on now. Yep. Made out three bands and fell upon the camels uh-huh. and had carried Wait, 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 wait. The camels, mm-hmm. the donkeys, the oxen, the sheep. I don't want to read. And carried them away uh-huh. and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I uh-huh. only am escaped alone to tell thee. Read. Oh, Lord. read. <laughs> while he. And while he was still talking, another guy came and pushed him out the way. Now look at look. And we're complaining because our lights got turned off. Come on now. Come on now. We're complaining because they threatened to, to re- repossess my car. Yeah, come on now. Could you imagine this? Mm-hmm. We're complaining because she walked out, she left me. She ain't no good. <laughs> Why you hunting her down and chasing her down and stalking her? She ain't no good. Come on. Come on. Huh? Oh, he ain't worth two cents. No, Why you calling him and follow him around, man? Why, Why you trying to track his phone? He ain't worth two cents. If he ain't worth two cents, I'm done with you. I got to do something worth a list of nickel. <laughs> Read. I'm just saying. Read. Thy sons and thy daughters were eaten. Oh, the hit, no, hold it now. First of all, you can mess with my property. You can mess with my land. Yeah. You can knock my house down and kill my sheep. But now the devil has crossed the line. Now he knocked his stick off my shoulder. Y'all, y'all don't read. Yeah. Right. Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. Now imagine Job has already heard this, all this bad news. Then somebody come and push him out the way and say, your, your children, you, they know what's going to be said. Yeah, yeah. Read. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the... Oh, that the hurricane? Yeah. Could, could wind, tornado, tornado hurricane? Yeah. Read. And they are dead. Uh-huh. And I alone. only am escaped alone to tell thee. All of your children are dead. All your property is gone. And guess what? Your livelihood, you know, yeah. the, the sheep and the oxen and, and the donkeys and the cattle, whatever it was that you was making money with, gone. Yeah. So not only did your kids die, not only did you lose your property, you got fired. Your job is over. Right. And here I stand by myself receiving all this news. Yes, sir. I'm finding it interesting that all of Job's Possessions were taken by someone else. Yes. His children, children were taken by something that he could not retaliate. By the nature. Right. So he can go chase them sapiens. He can go chase them Chaldeans. He can go chase everything else. But you can't chase the wind of God. You can't chase a hurricane. Yeah. You can't chase a tornado. You right. can't chase that. Right. So the children were killed with no recompense. I have no way of, of, of defending their honor. Right. Yeah. And here stands Joe by himself receiving this news. And now who can tell me? Without looking, what's the first thing Job did? Come on, I've been loading my gun, sharpening my sword, calling the Apostle Tati because I know he packed. I've been calling people, and I know they packed. He might be packing now, he packing choke sometimes. I know, oh, did I say that? Okay, so I know he be packing. I'll be calling the Apostle. We gotta go handle some business. That's what, that's what we've been doing. We've been calling the crew. Right. We've been calling the crew saying, man, let's go do this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What Job Who knows what Job did? He prayed. Come on. Job did not seek retaliation. This man did something. <sighs> what you got, Pastor Isaac? He said, rent his clothes. And what else? What, what do you do, Prophet? He rent his clothes and then he worked. He, he bowed down and, and worked. What, what did he do? He shaved his head. He rent his clothes. You know, you know, when you shave your head, that's a sign of mourning. Yes. When you rip your clothes, it's a sign of grief in the, in the Bible. Yes. And, 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 and you keep reading this, and he put on sackcloth and ashes. He put on all black and sat and ashes. That means I am now officially mourning. Yes. He did all of that, and then what did he do? Did he curse God? No. 
what does scripture say? He worshiped. What does it say? Uh, this is what you wrote on there. Then Job arose uh -huh. and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped. He worshiped. Yes, Saints of God, he didn't pour it in the process. He did not curse God. He didn't, even though he had somebody encouraging him to do it. He had people around him saying, man, I wouldn't serve this guy if I was you. And they had his, his friends were like, what would you do, Joe? Come on, Come on man, be honest. Come on, Joe. What, what's going on? You did. You had to do something. All oh, this just don't happen to nobody. But you know, if you, if you read in the subscript, when, when, when the son of God went to worship, it said that Hillel, who we call the devil, his real name is Hillel, yeah. Hillel came to worship with them. And Hillel, and the Lord said to Hillel, what you did? The Lord said, you're wrong. What you did? He said, I've been doing what you commissioned me to do, going to and fro in the earth, up and down in it, seeking whom I made the right. right. And the Lord says, been to Job's house. Yeah. <laughs> and the devil says, why would I? You got him surrounded. Right. Come on. Why would I go to Job's house? You know, he's protected. You got that hedge of glory around him. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. When Job oh, said, the thing that I fear has come upon me, he wasn't talking about losing people, counting the things. He was talking about losing that hedge of glory that surrounded him. That's the thing that he feared, losing God's protection. He said, you protected him. You know I can't get to him. Yeah. So I, I, I walk, I, I've been by his house and I bumped up against that glory and cut right going. Right, right. <laughs> but guess what now? We got the glory where? We got the glory inside of us. We got the glory. God, the Bible said that, that, that this, uh, this treasure, what is called the scripture? The treasure in an earthen vessel. And we got treasure in earthen vessels. So the treasure is in us now. So now the glory cannot be taken away from me. It's in me forever. It's in me forever. So now the devil bump up against me and get burned by this glory. He gets scorched by the glory of God. And even if things go bad, I'm not going to poison the process. I'm not going to curse God. I'm not going to talk bad about God. I will die in my grave letting everybody know that Jesus is Lord. Yahshua HaMashiach, he's Lord. No matter how bad my life was, oh, he died a pitiful death. But he never denied God. That's the testimony. He never denied God. I was just going to say, my boy's gone. But his friends were the haters that were yes. coming to him. Yes. They misconstrued his mind at the end of the, the chapter of Job. God, they had to come to Job in order to uh, receive. Who put it? <laughs> she always jumped ahead. She got the neck. She got the neck. She got the head. They had to come back. Come on. The haters had to come back to bed. Now, but hold on. They were telling Joe, you did something, man. Because you know, you had to do something. Because whenever a tear of God comes, it comes and just goes on you for the way. And Joe, man, Joe, just, come on, Joe. Just, just, press up. Press just, I ain't gonna tell you about it. Just tweet me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what happens in, in, in Vegas stays in Vegas. Oh, <laughs> Be honest. And Job was like, I'm being honest. Right. Right. I didn't do anything. Right. I didn't do anything. But the scripture said that Yahshua endured the cross and suffered the shame for the glory that was set before him. Come on now. Notice in the end, Job got seven times more of yeah. everything that he had. Yeah. Could you imagine that? He got seven times more because he didn't poison the process. He didn't speak against what God was doing in his life. And because of that, God blessed him. That's why we, we call the man, what we call him, Pastor Max, the rich young ruler. We call the man the rich young ruler. We say that. We call him rich. But that man wasn't rich like he could have been. Y'all know that. But the Lord said, he, he says, he says to the Lord, smart out of the son of God, said, Lord, what must I do? First he called him good master. Yeah. Good master. What must I do to inherit the kingdom? Yeah. Now, he already had his answer in mind. Because he knew what the Lord was going to say. The Lord said, keep my commandments. He said, "Love." He said, you know the commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. He said, keep the commandments. What did, what did, what did the ruler say? He said, <laughs> I've done that from my youth up. What that God? And he wanted the Lord. This is what he wanted. He wanted God to, um, to what do you call it, give his death approval to him. He wanted the Lord to verify him. Well, I'm not word I want. Validate. Validate. He, validate. To validate. He wanted the Lord to validate him. He wanted the Lord to say, ha ha, everyone, look at this guy. He's kept him from his youth up. He hasn't broken the law. That's what he wanted. So he says, the Lord, I've done that. And he said, what that guy? 
The Lord will say nothing, young man. Go and preach. The Lord says, uh, one thing you lack. I know his face up. Huh? These people are looking. No, you weren't thinking about that a minute ago. He said, one thing you lack. He said, sell all you have. Give to the poor. Follow me. And the scripture said the man was sad. He said his possessions were great. And he turned around and said, I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> he put his finger up. You know how I used to do Put that finger up in church. He put that finger up, got out of there. You know why? Because the Bible says his possessions were great. Now, the reason why I say he wasn't rich, why do I say he wasn't rich? Who knows? He, he wasn't rich because what if he would have obeyed God? What if he would have said, Yes, Lord? Yeah. And so I was blessed and gave it to the poor. Yeah. Knowing how God operates. Yeah, way more. Man, he thought he was blessed. If he would have obeyed God, he would have been triple, double, quadruple. I don't know how to say seven, quintuple, that's what, that's, that's six. Uh, he would have been blessed. Yes. Above measure. Then he would have been the rich young ruler. Yes. But he could not do it. He poisoned the process. How did he poison the process? By saying no. Yeah. And turning around and walking away. Yeah. And when you put poison in the process, whatever God designed for you to have at the end of that process, whatever God saw that you would get if you obeyed, you don't get that. Amen. You don't get that. Yeah. When you pour poison in your process, you don't get the outcome. Come on, you want to be delivered? You want to be healed? You want a wife, a husband? Don't poison the process. Amen. Stop crying every night, tell the Lord how lonely you are. Oh God, I'm tired of sleeping in this cold bed. Well, turn off me and praise God anyway. Say, Lord, I thank you. I'm single, but I love you. I'm single, but I got you. I'm single, but I'm not going to let that sickness turn me away. You know what you're doing when you do that? You're now hiding yourself in the Lord. And the Bible says, when a man finds a wife, when you hide yourself, only your husband can see you. Come on now. No man can see you. Come on now. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. boy. I'm going to Yes. Seek ye first the kingdom. Yes. And all these things will be added. But we got to get our mind. People, it's our mind. We've got to get our mind right. We got to get our mind regulated to think like God thinks. Our mind has been programmed and our mind has been trained to think like the world. The world seeks revenge. The world are haters. The world lies on people. The world, in our mind, is programmed to be like the world. When our minds should be programmed to be like Christ. You know what Job even said? Job even said this. He said, Though you slay me, yeah, well, I'll see. Yeah, when last time you said that? I remember saying, Though you slay me, Lord, it hurts. I remember saying that. I remember saying that. I remember saying, Though you slay me, but I'll serve you. You slay me, Lord, I can't do this. Right. So we need to begin to speak scriptural. Lord, I feel like you're slaying me, but I know you're not. I know this is part of the process, Father. And I accept the process. I accept it, Lord. Whatever it is you want me to go through, I accept it. Let's look at one more person. Joshua. One more person. How many of y'all give me five more minutes? How many of y'all give me five minutes? You got five, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Tell us what you got. All right. All right. All right. Good, good, good. Now, um, Joshua. Look, look at Joshua. Notice in the book of Joshua, ah, uh, boy, what chapter is it when the walls came down? What chapter is that? Ten? Nah. Maybe too far. Joshua chapter ten, maybe too far. Three, four, five. Find out when the, I'm going to show you something. When the walls fell, if you notice what Joshua had, let me know if you find it, Apostle. If you notice what Joshua did, Moses had died, right? Moses was gone. Joshua, there was a new sheriff at the time. His name is Joshua, right? His name is actually Yehoshua. That's his, that was his Hebrew name, Yehoshua. And then he had his partner. What was his partner's name? And notice we say road dog, right? What a coincidence. What was his road dog's name? Joshua and Caleb, or Caleb in Hebrew. So Joshua and Caleb, you know what Caleb means? Caleb means mean, vicious dog. So he was Joshua's road dog. That's what the word Caleb means. It means vicious dog. It means that I'm a rock water and a pit bull mixed up. You ain't got a chance. I don't know if that's good mix or not, because I don't know much about dogs. Is that a good mix? Terrible mix. Terrible mix? Okay. Scratch that, dude. I don't know. I don't know much about dogs. So now, now, Joshua and Caleb were different. They went to the land where, the, where they, they were part of the spies that went in, right? They went and spied the land out. When they came back, it was 12 spies. Ten of them said, we're toast if we go in there. Right. Ten of them said, those Canaanites is going to beat our clothes.
what we're talking about. Right. You know what else they said? They said, we are like grasshoppers in their sight. Yeah. The Canaanites didn't say, y'all grasshoppers. They said it. Yes, they said it. They said, man, we're grasshoppers. They're going to whip our clothes off of us. We're going to be embarrassed if we go into Canaan. Joshua and Caleb said, back there, listen. They're just looking around. Joshua, what y'all said? Joshua said, we got this. Caleb said, dead me. Got to bring something to get some. Two people. Two of them. was like, you know what? We got this. Joshua and Caleb said, we can do this. And when Moses died, who did he drop the mantle on? Joshua. And when it came time to go into Canaan, God gave them, you talk about a process. They had one of the most stringent processes in the whole Bible. Yes. Didn't they? Yes, they did. They had a stringent process in the whole Bible. Why? Because God said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to come out of the woods, and I want you to walk around Jericho once a day for six days. Yes. Then he said, on the seventh day, I want you to walk around Jericho seven times. Yes. And at the end of that, I want you to shout to the top of your voice. How many of y'all would say, Satan, I'm about to you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How many of y'all would say, Devil, use a lie? Right. Ain't gonna look like no fool out there. Well, I come to fight. I'm a warrior. Yeah. Come out to play. Y'all yeah. <laughs> too young. Y'all too young. How many of y'all do that? Yeah. <laughs> come out and play. Yeah. So he says, he says, Don't play with me. Yeah, don't play with me. Like, right here, clapping for his head. Come out and play. Don't play with me, Lord. You want me to do what? You want me to walk around the city seven times, a six, uh, a six, six days in a row, once, once a day. On the seventh day, we'll do seven times. You want me to shout? And Joshua and Caleb said, Yes, Lord. Mm-hmm. They didn't poison that process. So now, when they went and surrounded the wall of Jericho, and they walked around that first day, could you imagine that? Millions of people, over three million people walking around the wall that first day. Oh, Jesus is on. Man, learn. Tell them what you want. Oh, Jesus. Okay. All right, all right, I'm sorry about that. So they walk around, now listen, I want you to hear this and I'll be done, I promise I'll be done. They walk around this wall, mm-hmm. one time, they come out, three million some people, and they walk around the wall. And you know the city, inside the city of Jericho, the Canaanites came out ready to fight. Yeah. They came out and got the cannons ready and the bow and arrows and the arrows were fired. They're like, oh man, it's cracking. And they walk around, why didn't get ready? They say, ain't no, ain't no arrows being shot. Yeah. Ain't, no, ain't nobody, what's going on? They look. They just walked away. Wait, hold, hold on. And they went back into the woods. And they said, these folk are crazy. Yep. <laughs> but I'm sure, I, and I wasn't there, but I promise you, they said, they ain't going to catch us sleeping tomorrow. Right. They got ready, yeah. got on the watch, and was ready to fight. Second day, what happened? They come out, they walk around the city, and they go back into the woods. About the fourth or fifth day, they came back up there with, they up there with Krispy Kreme and, and coffee. Here they come. And they, they go and they drink the coffee and laugh about it, right? Yeah, day six, they, they have a good time. Day seven, they walk around one time, but they didn't go back into the woods. They walk around again. And now the king likes to drop the coffee and don't say, oh, oh, wait. Then they walk around again. They walk around again. They pick the donuts back up. They ain't going to do nothing. And they start back eating. They walk around again. Jesus is on the main line. Tell them what you They walk around again, right? So then about... About the seventh time, I want you to hear this. On the seventh time that they walked around, the Bible said that they did a Shabbat. Mm-hmm. Do y'all know what Shabbat is? Yeah. You know what Shabbat is? Do a Shabbat for me. You can do it. Do a Shabbat for me. Do it. You know what Shabbat is? Ah! As loud as you can. Everybody do that right now. One, two, three. Ah! That's what Shabbat is. They scream to the top of their voice. Now, the Canaanites sit inside the wall and thinking, man, what is going on with these people? Mm-hmm. They scream to the top of their voice, and do you know what happened? Yes. The scripture calls it, the scripture calls it Nefar Takak. Yeah. Nefar Takak. You know what that means? That means the walls fell down flat. Now, yeah. the walls did not fall in on the children of Canaan. The walls did not fall out on the children of Israel. The walls fell straight down underneath the ground, and the scripture said they fell how flat that they can walk right across. It was probably a perfect paved road. That's God for you. Now, now wait. Why do we have to fight for this victory? Why do we got to fight for it, Lord? We did everything you said you got to do. Now, now let me tell you something. The wall of Jericho, you need a little Bible history. The wall of Jericho was built and it's supposed to be the top technology of the day. But God knew that the way they built it, it was set to crumble. Therefore, enough vibration would hit the earth that the wall would crumble because they built it without the top technology. What do you build with top technology? 
knowledge of the time, but guess who's the chief technologist? God. So he knew how to tear the wall down. So he knew that if there was enough vibration in the earth, that that brick would begin to crumble. And they walked around seven, well, how many times? One, two, seven, seven times six. Thirteen times they walked around that wall. Crumbling the ground. Shaking the earth. Crumbling the brick. And when they nailed, guess what that sound did? It broke the foundation of that wall, and the wall fell down flat. Now it might look stupid, but if God told me to do it, I'm doing it. Amen. It might look dumb, but if God says do it, do it anyway. Yes, Lord. Do it anyway. Yes, Lord. No, no, I mean, you're absolutely right with God and his technology, because you have these pile drivers or, or post diggers where something sits on top of them, it vibrates and pushes the pole into the ground. Really? So, so basically, the vibration from the shout of the Israelites excited yeah. the ground yeah. and loosened everything up, and it went down. Y'all hear that? Yeah. Coming straight from a scholar. He's a scholar now. Don't, don't, don't doubt his word. Yes, ma'am. And even that, look at the New Testament. God says in every situation, give thanks. Give thanks. And worship God. Right. In your situation, you are setting a, a vibration. Yeah. You look at you. Look at you. Angry that you finish. Angry. Ah. Look, she said, you are, when you're worshiping, you're vibrating the ground. And when you're screaming and crying to God, you're tearing the walls down. Oh, man, that's good right there, Pastor Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. So now, the walls are down flat, and they enter in to fight. Why do I have to fight even though the walls are down? Why? Because God wants you to taste the victory. He wants you to know that you're more than a conqueror. He wants you to know it. There's a battle, but guess what? I'm going to win the battle. I think the Bible says fight the good fight of faith. Did it say that? Yes. It's a battle. That's it. But we're winning. And we always win. So Joshua and Caleb. Now, the Lord mentioned Caleb in Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. What did it say? Who knows what it says? What did it say, prophet? From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence. And the violent take it by force. That word force there is the same, it's the Greek word that's compatible with the word kalab. That word force means like an angry, vicious dog. Apostle. I'm snatching it away. Like an angry, vicious dog. Like an angry, vicious dog, we're coming in. You hear that? It don't matter what the devil has said, no matter what forces he set up, God says that the gates of hell will not prevail against the kingdom. Now, Shua said, I stand the door and knock. Did he say that? So the Lord is coming. You open that door, he's coming in. He's coming in. So we have got to have that same tenacity. Amen. That same bulldogness Amen. that they had. We got the Holy Ghost in us, people. Hallelujah. We have the Spirit of God in us. It's in us. What Psalm 27 once said? The Lord is my life and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When my wicked even the enemies and my foes came up against me to eat up my flesh. They stumbled and fell. I would say to the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my fortress. In him will I trust. The Lord will protect you as long as you don't poison the process. Let it go through. Let the thing play itself out. Because therefore, God knows. God knows. Even when it comes to money. I've been waiting on this big lump sum of money, about $300,000 for a couple of years now. And, and, but it hadn't been released. And so I'm like, Lord, at least two years, maybe more. And I'm like, okay, what, what, you know, where my money at, Lord? Mm-hmm. Bango got his money. Bango got his. Where my money at? But guess what? The Lord knows something that I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Y'all better hear that. Yes, he the Lord knows something that I don't know. Yeah. He knows something I don't know. Because guess what? These these people they got their big money, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars. Now, now the IRS is investigating them. Uh-huh. To make sure they spend every penny where it's supposed to be spent, where it's supposed to be spent. Don't mess with me. So now, so now, God says to me, God says to me, I'm protecting you, and I got something better. I got more than three hundred thousand for you. I got more than that. Now, that God has more than that for us. And I've been praying, Lord, open doors. I've been praying, Lord, open doors. Now, I pray for God to open doors. In my mind, I got a different thing open because I feel like I feel like, Lord, you bless me with your word. You give me your word. Uh, you know, I got your word down. And, you know, I, I know how to exegete your word. I know the technology of how to do this. You know, so I, I, when I pray, Lord, open doors, I think somebody gonna call me to preach. Open doors, Lord. And the God, He's opening the doors, all right. 
But not those are preaching. Come on, come not those are preaching. Come on. I, I got a call the other day. The cop said, man, look, we, we, we can, you can get $2 million. I said, I'll stop lying to me. <laughs> Maricopa County called me about an hour later. Mr. Webster. Maricopa County. The lady from the county, whatever's office. I'm like, yes. She said, your, your, your uh, family member said, blah, 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 that you have a 501c3 and that you have Tullio's Training Center Bible School and it's an LLC and we have funds that are delegated to 501c3s and LLCs from anywhere from uh, 400000 up to $2 million. And from the looks of it, if what he said is true, you qualify. I didn't say nothing. I looked at the phone and paused. Say lie. Say lie. So God knows better than men. So what, what I'm expecting to happen, God says, just let that sit where it is. Yeah. I got something better for you. Yeah. So when you're expecting God to move one way, he just might move a whole nother way. Yeah. He just might come a whole nother way. And I'm going to tell y'all something. You can believe this or not believe it. But I'm going to tell you right now, you can take it to the bank and, and prophet will tell y'all, let, let them lose $2 million to a brother. Let them do it. Let them do it. All y'all going to be blessed. Ain't that person so not to talk and have all the money to myself. I'm driving a Bentley and everybody else on a jail code bus. Y'all too young. Go over to jail code. How many y'all remember jail code? Jail code, yellow bus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Amen. Come on. No. When they drop that money on me, not only are prophet and I going to be rich, all the saints going to be blessed. Amen. Yes, sir. I, I don't play like that. No. Amen. So guess what, people? God says he's going to bless us in his time in the season. Yeah. And I'm not going to poison the process. I'm not going to get mad. I'm not going to say, Lord, you should have did this. Lord, this should have been done. Why well, ain't done yet? I'm not doing that. Amen. Just saying, thank you, Father. Amen. No matter what the situation is, yes. give the Lord thanks. Yes. Are y'all here? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Give the Lord thanks. Yes, I didn't want to interrupt your clothes. Joshua That's chapter okay. 6. Joshua 6? Yes. Read it. All right. Uh, Joshua 6, what did say? verse 15. Uh -huh. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city uh -huh. after the same manner seven times, only on that day they compassed the city seven times. Uh -huh. Verse 16, and it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew with the trumpet, uh -huh. Joshua said unto the people, shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. Mm. Verse 17, and the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein to the Lord. Only Rahab, the harlot, shall live, and shall, uh, she... Wait, wait, hold on, only who? Rahab. Rahab who? The harlot. Wait, 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 wait. Come on. So God is saying, I'm going to destroy everybody yep. but this prostitute. Yep. And then he called her a prostitute, called her a harlot. That's, yep. that's the difference. Yep. All right? So I'm going to destroy everything and everybody except for the harlot. Yes. Why? Why would God spare the whorish woman? Why? Because she, she was the lineage that Christ came through. So she had to survive. Okay. That's, that's the historical reason. Right. Give me the primitive reason. No, because she helped the spies when they... Yes. Because when the enemies came to get the spies, right. Rahab said, they're not here. Right. <laughs> they was there, but the harlot said, they ain't here. Yeah. She protected the people of God. Yeah. And her name was mentioned as prophet said in the lineage. Yeah. So God says, I'm going to kill everybody except for Harlan. Yeah. And we're like, how are you going to live? Because God does what he wants to do. Yes, the scripture says the son of man can save whoever he wants to. Yeah. No so the walls, what is, did it say the walls fell down flat? Is that the verse? Uh, no, it didn't say the, uh, let's see. But, uh, what verse is that? It said the walls fell down flat. Okay. Uh, verse 20, so the people shouted, then the priest blew with the trumpet, and it came to pass, when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted the, uh, with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat, uh -huh. so that the people went up into the city, uh -huh. every man straight before him, and they took the city. So then the walls fell down flat, they shouted and screamed, the walls came down. So people don't poison the process. Let, whatever God is taking us through, let's just go through. What are we going? Through. Through, through. We're not stuck. We may be having some trouble in our lives and trials and tribulations. Even if you got to live by yourself. Amen. Let me tell y'all, I'm prepared. I love my wife, but I'm prepared. That if I have to live alone, mm -hmm. I'll do it. Yeah. And she has the same preparation to her. Amen. If I have to climb and leave, she ain't going to go back on the Lord. Come on. Yeah. No, no, no. Come on. Yes, Come on, people. You don't leave God for people. No, you don't. No. Look, nobody in this room was there when God filled me with the Spirit. 
Amen. So how am I going to let you, you know what I mean? No. I'm going to keep serving God regardless of what he means to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Amen. And I just wanted to say that the people, when they were walking around that wall, they were quiet. Think about that. Think about the process. Exactly. Wow. Think, of, think about the emotional tension. Right. The feelings they were having. The thoughts that they yes, were thinking. Yes, yes, And think about how a movie, right? Like when you see war and a warrior that's like, going wild, going nuts, right? right and just right. so strong and so powerful, slaying a bunch of people. I just want us to think about that when the wall goes down. They make that sound. And it's a sound that was built up, that was pinned up. A sound that had to, you know, build up and bubble up and come out onto the outside to the point where they have so much is it tenacity, boldness, right, right, courageousness? Yes, yes. And it, I could imagine too that like once the wall goes down, there's some kind of surprise and shock that happens even in the the, uh, the children of Israel. I would be like, whoa, because oh, right. you know, because you know right. God is doing something, right? right? You yeah, know He's right. planning something. You know He's intending to do something with right. the thing that He's telling you to do. But then right. once you see it happen, it's like, whoa. God, you actually did it. I believed in you. I stayed fast. I stayed true. And now you're doing exactly what you showed me you would. I've been feeling it. I've been sensing it. I've been hearing it. And now the walls have come down. And I'm about to lose my mind on these people that tried to keep us out. That tried to take what God told us that is ours. Try to take what was ours. They try to keep it. They try to withhold it. But I was true to God. Yes, Lord. And once the wall came down, I lost it. <laughs> I lost. I could just see it. I could see them losing their mind because God's strength was on them. His anointing was on them. The power was on them. But guess what? It's for an appointed time that that anointing is able to flourish and is able to do exactly what it's meant to do. When we allow the anointing to just bubble up, rise up, just come to a certain fullness and completeness in our lives, that's when it has the most power. That's when it does exactly what it's supposed to do. That's when it's effective. That's when it's fertile. The effectual fervent prayer of who? The righteous man availeth much. Availeth much. Performs much. Does much. Works out much. Accomplishes much. That's what our righteousness does. That's what our obedience to the Lord does. No matter how long it takes. He that waits on the Lord shall renew his strength. He shall mount up with wings as eagles. He shall run and not grow weary. He shall walk and he shall not faint. That is what the Lord tells us. But we have to wait. Let's make it, let's, let's take it home. Emotions, right? When we feel what we feel. When our emotions want to get the best of us. If we hold on. We hold those emotions in. We harness those emotions. A woman that's able to harness her emotions, harness her feelings, she will let loose at the right time. She will destroy the yokes of bondage. She will destroy the enemy. She will destroy everything around her. A man too. But listen, women, we have this power in our emotions. And when we harness them the right way, when we allow God to utilize those emotions, those yes, feelings Lord. Yes, Lord. at the right time and in the right place, use us hermeneutically if you will, if you will, where he will use us, when he will use us, why he will use us, what he will use us, how he will use us in the right time, the right way, the right form, the right season. Everything will come out right. It will come out perfect because we're planted. We're planted, amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Let's get going. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You thank God for what you're doing. Don't poison the process. Don't let God do these things. You know, we, we, we have to, you have to be trained in that. You don't, that don't happen with me. You know what I mean? When you first get saved, I mean, when I first got saved, I, I, I was saved for a good year. 
I made it for about a year before I cursed. Not about a good year ago. And uh, I, I can't remember what happened, but I started cursing like a sailor. Oh, did y'all imagine? I was, I was the, the greater crop salvation. And now somebody got on my nerve, I started cursing like a sailor. I cried. I was like, oh, God, I got to get baptized again. I didn't know what to do. I repented to God. I called my dad. I said, Dad, Dad, you're going to believe this. He said, what? I said, Dad, I am not say it. I just said, I cursed. I said, I cursed. And I said, I cursed more than once. And I was feeling horrible. I was feeling bad. And my dad started laughing. I said, what are you? Oh, this is funny. I said, Dad, I need to get baptized. Fill the tub up. I'm on my way. I want to get baptized all over. He said, boy, did you repent? I did. He said, well, you good. I said, what do you mean? Just like that. He said, just like that. You ain't got to get baptized. He laughed. He said, yeah, I was waiting for that to happen to you. I said, what do you mean? He said, cause you've been walking around haughty, been walking around in pride, like you the stuff since you've been saved. Wow. He said, you got a powerful testimony, which I did. I was facing in prison and all that kind of stuff. You got a powerful testimony, son. He said, but you got to give it in humility. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, man. Slice me to pieces. And so, you know what I did though? I said, Lord, I thank you for forgiving me. And then I had to forgive myself. Yeah. That's the part. Come on, come on, come on. That's the thing right there. We've got to forgive ourselves. Once we forgive ourselves, we can go on with our life. Amen. But I, I, thought I, was, I thought I was done. Because I cursed it off high and mighty. But guess what? Guess what? When we think we're high and mighty, we're not. Right. We're not. It's good to say God, God will humble us. Yes. God gave, uh, he showed Moses the Canaanite. Moses didn't get to go, but he saw it. So that land that Joshua and Caleb took was the land that was promised to who? Huh? Think about what you're trying to do to me. Who did he promise that? Who did he promise that land to? Abraham. He promised it to Abraham. Long before Moses got to it. Moses didn't even get there. He, when he promised Abraham, Joshua, you should reap when you have not sown. Joshua went there and took the land. He went and took the land. The land that you took. Right? Oh, let's stand. Let's just stand and pray this for a moment. Hallelujah. Right. 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 Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We love you. And Father, we just we lift our hands to you. We lift our hearts to you. We lift our spirits unto you, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Father, we are not going to poison this process that you put us through. Whatever it is, Lord, we thank you for it. We thank you in the midst of the trial. We thank you during the trial. We thank you, Father, in the midst of tribulation. We give you glory right now. Father, all those things feel like they're falling apart and we feel like everything and the kitchen sink is being thrown at us. We thank you anyway. We give you praise regardless to what's happening around us. We praise you. We love you. We thank you. We honor you regardless of the trials. Hallelujah. And we bless your holy name. In Hashem, in Hashem. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God.